This is a picture test in practical anatomy of the reproductive system. You may use the videos as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, I will allow two seconds of pause for each picture before starting to comment so that you may pause the video and spend your own time to read the question and come up with the answer. Then you can replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. Now I will deal with the gross anatomy of the female pelvis and perineum. Identify the vessel A and nerve B. This is a sagittal section of the pelvis and here is the posterior aspect to be oriented. This is the sacrum. And here you can see that this is the common iliac artery dividing into external and internal iliac and this is the posterior division and anterior division of the internal iliac artery. The posterior division of the internal iliac artery it continues down and leaves the pelvis above piriformis. Here is the piriformis muscle forming the bed for the sacral plexus. And so this artery here is the superior gluteal artery. It's a branch of the posterior division of the internal iliac artery, a big branch that passes above piriformis muscle and as you can see it here uh, the artery is located in between two nerves so the nerve B which we are also asked to identify is S1 and the nerve A here is the lumbosacral trunk so superior gluteal artery it leaves the pelvis above piriformis above S1 if you look here this is the inferior gluteal artery it leaves the pelvis below S2 here is S2 here, so above S1 is the superior gluteal artery and below S2 is the inferior gluteal artery. Identify the pouches 1 and 2. This is a sagittal section of a female pelvis to be oriented again. This is the urinary bladder, the base, neck of the bladder, and here is the direction toward the apex of the bladder, and this is the uterus not exactly a midline sagittal section but you can see that some of the cavity of the body of the uterus here and here of course uh, this is the part of the cervix and leading into the vagina well, here's the vagina and that will be the rectum here this is the ampulla of the rectum that's the rectum here posteriorly so the pouch the first pouch here number one is located between the uterus and the upper surface of the urinary bladder and it is the utero-vesical pouch while the second pouch here is located between the rectum and the uterus and it's called the recto-uterine pouch or the pouch of Douglas. The one that is closely related to the vagina is the recto-uterine pouch because uh, in fact the pouch of Douglas is deep and dependent it extends here it covers the posterior vaginal fornix and covers the whole uh, cervix and posterior aspect of the of the uterus so it's the this pouch here the dependent pouch which is related to the posterior vaginal fornix and can be accessed through the vagina for that reason identify the muscle a what is its nerve supply to be oriented uh, this is the urogenital triangle of a female pelvis and these are the labia minora and in between them is the vestibule on the side of the vestibule is the bulb of the vestibule and the bulb is covered by muscle fibers which form the bulbospongiosis muscle here is the crust of the clitoris covered by ischiocavernosis muscle both these muscles the bulbospongiosis ischiocavernosis they are supplied by muscular branches from the pudendal nerve. Name the fibromuscular mass B. What is its clinical significance? Now, this fibromuscular mass is located posterior to the vestibule, uh, posterior to this region here, which is called the fourchette, uh, where the two labia minora meet. And it is located anterior to the anus. This is the region of the anus. So this is called the perineal body. It's a fibromuscular mass that serves as an anchorage point for uh, muscles and the pelvis and perineum. It provides attachment for levator ani, uh, superficial deep transverse perineal muscles, 
bulbospongiosis, a part of the external anal sphincter. This fibromuscular mass is very important for maintaining the positions of the pelvic viscera and for their continence, like continence of feces, continence of urine, uh, because if this mass fails and levator ani fails and the sphincters fail, this will result in either incontinence or it will result in prolapse of the vagina or the uterus or the bladder. In the female, this mass is very important because it is prone to become torn or excessively distended during um, delivery. That's why care should be taken not to destroy the perineal body and uh, pelvic floor muscle exercises are also advised during and after pregnancy. Identify the structures A and B. Again, to be oriented, this is a, a sagittal section of a female pelvis. You can see the fundus of the uterus here. This is the sacrum located posteriorly. Let's look at the structure A and follow it upwards. So if we follow it upwards, it comes from the abdomen, crosses the pelvic brim at the bifurcation of the external and internal iliac arteries, bifurcation of the common iliac into external and internal iliac arteries. And then this structure goes straight down into the pelvis and then passes forwards to open into the urinary bladder. This is the region of the urinary bladder. So structure A is the ureter. If we look at structure B here and follow it backwards, you'll see that it arises from the internal iliac artery. This is the anterior division of the internal iliac artery, and it provides this branch that goes medially. Actually, it is located in the base of the broad ligament, which has been removed here, and it reaches the lower part of the uterus. This is the fundus, and here is the region of the cervix of the uterus, lower down. So the artery here is the uterine artery. Now, if you look again here, you will see the characteristic relation of the uterine artery and the ureter. The uterine artery crosses above the ureter. So this is classically described as the relation of water under the bridge. Water is the urine that is present in the ureter, and this water or the ureter is passing under the bridge that is formed by the uterine artery. It is inferior to the uterine artery. A relation that should always be remembered in order uh, not to confuse these structures during an operation. Uh, for example, uh, uh, an operation that is required to uh, ligate the uterine artery, for example, in cases of hysterectomy, and uh, so that uh, to maintain the ureter while ligating the uterine artery and not resulting in iatrogenic injury of the ureter. Always remember the relation here, water under the bridge, the ureter under the uterine artery. This is a laparoscopic view of a female pelvis, looking at it from above, and uh, you can probably easily identify some of the structures here. Uh, a, A1 is the fundus of the uterus. Here is the region of the corno of the uterus, and attached to the corno of the uterus is the uh, fallopian tube, the uterine tube here, and this is a glistening membrane here is the broad ligament attached to the posterior aspect of the broad ligament is the ovary and here you can see that there is a thickening in the broad ligament posteriorly extending from the uterine pole of the ovary to the region of the cornu below the entrance of the uterine tube and this is the round ligament of the ovary or the or we can just call it the ligament of the ovary and anteriorly, and within the broad ligament, there is another thickening that goes anteriorly, again, from just below the cornu of the uterus, and this is the round ligament of the uterus. The round ligament of the uterus is extending forward, and then it will leave the pelvis through the deep inguinal ring. So here, anteriorly, is the anterior abdominal wall, and posteriorly is the region of the rectum, and that is the recto-uterine pouch of Douglas. Identify the nerves A and B. What is the root value of each? This is a sagittal section, close-up view of a sagittal section of a, a pelvis. Here you can see the internal iliac artery and its divisions, posterior division and anterior division. These muscle fibers are 
pyriformis, belong to pyriformis muscle. And in front of pyriformis is the sacral plexus in here. The sacral plexus is formed by L4, 5, S1, 2, 3, and 4. So uh, this is one of the nerves that contributes to the sacral plexus. This is the lumbosacral trunk from L4, 5. And here is S1. Between lumbosacral trunk and S1 is the superior gluteal artery. So this is the lumbosacral trunk B. While A is in the lateral wall of the pelvis, it uh, enters the pelvis just deep to the bifurcation of the internal, and this is the region of the external iliac artery. And it's heading forward to the lateral wall where there is, here's the obturator internus muscle, and there is a small opening here, is the uh, obturator canal. So the nerve is the obturator nerve, and you can see that it is accompanied by an artery, which is a branch of the internal iliac artery. This is the obturator artery. So the nerve is the obturator nerve, and this is a branch of lumbar plexus, L2, 3, and 4. Identify the peritoneal pouch at the tip of the index finger. This is a sagittal section of a female pelvis, showing here the pubic symphysis. Just behind the pubic symphysis, here is the urinary bladder superior surface apex of the urinary bladder and that is the neck of the bladder and here is the posterior surface or the base of the bladder. Uh, it's a little bit compressed by the index finger and the index finger lies between the superior surface of the urinary bladder and the anterior surface of the uterus. So this is the uterovesical pouch. Identify the space into which the probe is introduced. Here this is the vagina and so the probe is in the vagina. To be specific here, you can see that the cervix of the uterus is protruding into the vagina and is surrounded by a space which is called the fornix. So here's the anterior fornix where the probe is, is lying and this is the region of the posterior fornix. Note that the posterior fornix is deeper than the anterior fornix and you can see that the posterior fornix is related to peritoneum of the rectouterine pouch of Douglas. It's covered by peritoneum, while the anterior fornix and lateral fornices are not related to peritoneum. Identify the pelvic diameters A and B. To be oriented, this is a sagittal section of a female pelvis, uh, showing the sacrum here posteriorly and the pubic symphysis anteriorly. This is the region of the promontory of the sacrum, and these diameters are representations of the anteroposterior diameter of the inlet of the pelvis or superior pelvic aperture. So A extends from the superior border of the symphysis pubis to the promontory of the sacrum and this is the anteroposterior diameter of the inlet which is also called the true conjugate diameter. It's about 11 centimeter. Knowledge of these diameters is important in order to assess the capacity of the pelvis but this diameter cannot be assessed directly in a, during a clinical examination, so it is usually assessed indirectly by assessing the diagonal conjugate diameter, which extends between the lower border of the symphysis pubis and the promontory of the sacrum. And this can be assessed during a PV examination. Uh, as you can see here, that the B, the diagonal conjugate diameter, which can be assessed clinically, is longer than the true conjugate diameter. It's about 1.5 centimeters longer than the true conjugate diameter. So it's about 12.5 centimeter in a normal capacious pelvis. Identify the vessel A, what is its origin, and identify the muscle B, through which foramen does the muscle leave the pelvis. Vessel A, to be oriented first of all, this is the sacrum located posteriorly, and here's the common iliac artery dividing into external and internal iliac. So this is the internal iliac artery that goes down into the pelvis and provides the main blood supply of the pelvis. This muscle is located in the posterior aspect of the pelvis. And in fact, it's arising from the uh, anterolateral aspect of the sacrum, middle three pieces of the sacrum, and forms a bed for the sacral plexus. So this is the pariformis muscle and it leaves the pelvis through the greater sciatic notch to reach the gluteal region where it will be attached to the greater trochanter of the femur.